Good morning. Hello. Good morning, Facebook land. So we are here because it is nine o'clock on Thursday morning. It's a handy dandy little gadget, this Fitbit right here. How are you this morning? I hope that you are doing well. I hope that you um, have looked out the window, seen that the sun is shining and have been reminded this morning that, hey y'all, good morning, have been reminded that um, the sun is shining straight into your life with love and grace and mercy and purpose. So good morning, I'm really glad you're here. All right, so will you join me? Hey Barb, good morning, hey mom. Will you join me in our opening prayer? And we're back in the field guide for family prayer this morning. Dear Lord, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Grant us patience to do what we need to do today. Let our confidence not rest in our own understanding, but in your guiding hand. Let our desires not be for our own comfort, but for the joy of your kingdom, now and forever. Amen. And then hear these words from Psalm 122, verse 1. I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. Good morning, um, Pam and Joan and Carol. Good morning. I'm so glad y'all are here. So we've been traveling together through 1 Samuel, and we have made our way to chapter 18. And so if you have your handy dandy pen with you, we are going to stick to this first little section this morning in 1 Samuel chapter 18 because there's so much, it's very few verses, but there's so much about how God can strengthen us and, and call us into, um, wise us up a little bit, and call us into those faithful friendships, um, those, those abiding relationships that um, bless us so much here in, in this place. So here are these words. This is 1 Samuel chapter 18, and I'm beginning in verse 1. As soon as he had finished speaking to Saul, so this is David. As soon as David had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan, Jonathan is Saul's son, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day and would not let him return to his father's house. And then Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was on him and gave it to David and his armor and even his sword and his bow and his belt. And David went out and was successful wherever Saul sent him so that Saul set him over the men of war. And this was good in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servants. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's a little odd, the phrasing, I think. Um, I don't often walk around saying, I love you, because we share a soul. I mean, it's wedding language, right? But, um, when it says that the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David and he loved him as his own soul, not generally the kind of language we use between these really faithful, um, abiding friendships. Nevertheless, that's what we have here in scripture. I want to go back, go back to verse one. So David is talking to Saul about what had happened with Goliath. We read about um, David and Goliath, that nine foot, nine inch giant that um, really the Lord handed over to David. And so David is talking to Saul, Saul is the king, and he's telling him everything that happened. Well, if you remember back to that story on Tuesday when we read it, or you can just go back if you weren't with us on Tuesday and read through chapter 17. If you remember that, David was listening to all of the men of Israel and, and how they were afraid. And they were really, they were pushing back and they were saying, okay, somebody clearly has to go face this giant, but I'm not really sure that I'm the one to do that. 
And so David comes up and he's supposed to be getting a token from his brothers and he's supposed to be getting an update for his father. And he says, why are y'all so, and, and maybe he said y'all, <laughs> why, why are you so afraid of this giant? He has spoken against the one true God. Do you, how do you not remember who you are? You are the chosen people of God. Hello. And so he's very confused. And so finally Saul hears of David's faithfulness to God and he calls um, David to him. And David kind of expresses this same sort of befuddlement at why if we knew that God was going to go with us into this battle, why we weren't just going for it, why we were holding back, why we were being so afraid. And so Saul starts to give him all of his armor and starts to equip him from a human point of view to go face this giant. But David says, no, I, I can't go into this battle with what God has equipped you with. I need to go into this battle with what God has equipped me with because David had been created unique, right? just like all of us. And so he goes into battle with Goliath, but a big part of this story, back in um, chapter 18, a big part of this story is this very first verse. As soon as he had finished speaking to Saul, so as soon as David was finished speaking to Saul about everything that, that he believed and everything that he trusted and everything that had transpired and how the battle was not his but was God's and he wasn't going to win it with swords. He was going to just win it with this faith and the strength that came from God. Well, as he was, as he was speaking, Jonathan was listening and he was hearing David um, just tell his father all to listening to David tell Jonathan's father all that had happened and Jonathan heard his heart as he was doing this heard how faithful to God how trusting in God David was and something clicked in Jonathan and he thought oh my goodness this this man is one who is absolutely after God's heart one I can absolutely trust one I can connect with. And that's an amazing thing. So the soul of Jonathan, it says, was knit to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. He saw a faithful kindred in David. And Saul took him that day and would not let him return to his father's house. And then Jonathan made a covenant with David. I want to stop here for just a second because here's there's a lot going on. So Jonathan and David, both men after after God, they were both, they were very similar. They were both young, maybe five years between them. They were both young. They were both bold, men of God, men of action. So there were, there were some similarities there. But there's one really important similarity between Jonathan and David that could have potentially if they hadn't both been so focused on who God is and what God's doing and what God desired both of these men were in line for the throne now Jonathan was the king's son so he was the crown prince David was God's anointed something in the communication between David and Saul got Jonathan's attention so much that he did this. In verse three, then Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was on him and gave it to David and his armor and even his sword and his bow and his belt. Y'all, he handed the throne over to David right there. He so wanted to see God's action more than he wanted his own majesty to transpire. He wanted what God wanted more than he wanted what the nation expected even. People expected Jonathan to reign after Saul. He was the crown prince. He was the son of the king. It makes sense. But Jonathan saw God's heart inside David and said, okay, 
The throne of God's more important than the throne of Israel. And so David, I see God in you and I see who you are. And here, take the robe, take the armor, take everything I have. And this time, if you remember back to chapter 17, David didn't take the armor because it wasn't his to take. But this is different. This is Jonathan out of love and faithfulness to God saying here, what I have is yours. What I have coming to me is yours. And they moved forward in this beautiful friendship because the friendship was based in what held them together and not what could have potentially separated them. And that's the beauty of these faithful friendships, these abiding relationships that we have when we come together as the body of Christ. We see God's face on one another. We see Jesus in one another. We see the hand of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit acting in one another's lives. And when we see that, when we're open to seeing that, well, that's bigger and it's better than any of the things that are, are earthly that would separate us. Not that the earthly things aren't important, but the throne of God is more important than the throne of Israel. Does that make sense? Man, those are the kinds of faithful friendships that, that I want. Hey, hey Mitchell, hey Tim, good morning. That's, that's the kind of of relationship. That's the kind of connection that we are blessed with as the people of God. And so then it continues that um, David went out and was successful wherever Saul sent him, so that Saul set him over men of war. And this was good in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servants. So we're going to keep going next week. We're going to hop into 19. And between chapter 18 and chapter 19, we see Saul setting David over his um, men of war and it being good to it being pretty, pretty bad. In, in chapter 19, we're going to see Saul um, kind of flip there and, and try and take care of David in a not so faithful way. But for now, for this week, think about David and Jonathan and all of the things that could have separated them. A pretty large thing, the kingship of their people could have separated them, except that they realized, both of them together, that the lordship of God was bigger than any of that. And I think that's a good word for us today. There are so many things that divide us, brothers and sisters, right now. So many, so many ways that the body of Christ is divided and, and feels like it's under attack, and in many ways it is. But if we can remember that the Lordship of God is more important than any of that, that, that draws us together more than anything else, I think that we'll be able to remember that one, we are those in whom Christ dwells and the kingdom is not in trouble. So let's stay connected, okay? So I'm just wondering what's on your heart. Um, yes, Sheila, absolutely. I want what God wants more than what I want. Very good. Um, what's on your heart? Let's pray together this morning. And if you don't wanna put in the comments here what's on your heart, then you can always go to Acton Methodist dot com slash prayer and our awesome team of prayer warriors will lift up your situation will will bathe you and your your circumstance in prayer and it will be their honor and their joy to do so so wherever you are just know that that we're here as as your family of faith as as those who belong to christ jesus and who are connected by something that cannot be broken from any kind of earthly means we we don't have the power to do that, God is bigger than any way we can divide ourselves. So, let's pray. Awesome, awesome God. Lord, you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are in community as you call us 
into community. Jesus prayed in the garden, let them be united. So Lord, we thank you for this scripture today that shows that though there may be opportunities for division, if we can remember that you are bigger, more important, more lasting, more awesome than anything that might divide us, God. Well, just remind us that that is true. Give us that assurance. Give us that conviction. Give us that, that hope and that joy and that peace and that comfort and that connection that comes from knowing that we are to be in community as you are. That we are to be in community as yours. That we are to be in community that grows and that shares. Lord, you are you're awesome and majestic. You are strong. You are the lion of Judah, and yet you are the lamb, and you are gentle when that is what your people need. You bring comfort and peace and healing. You search after us when we are lost. You yank us back onto the path when we are wandering. You are our good shepherd. And God, we're thankful. We are thankful for every bit of your character that is revealed to us through Christ Jesus, that is revealed to us through the Holy Scriptures. God, we thank you today for reminding us of who you are and who we can be because of who you are. Lord, today we will have many opportunities to perpetuate division. Stop us in our tracks, God. Stop us in our tracks. Give us your vision for unity. Give us your vision for kingdom and for connection and for purpose. Give us your holy boldness to speak Jesus into the world around us today. Where we would sow division, help us sow you. Seeds for awakening and revival grace and your glory. Today, God, we're ready. We pray for Shelby and our Rancho Brazos community. We pray for health we pray for healing. We pray for test results that go in the right direction, God. We lift up to you those that are on our hearts that we're not able or ready to express out in the open right now, God. But we know that you hear those needs. You know that you see, we know that you see us and we know that you are already active. And so God, we are grateful. So today, draw us near to you and near to one another. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. It's a good word today. I am so glad that you are all my faithful friends. I'm glad that you are here this morning or this afternoon or tomorrow or next year. Whenever you see this video, I am so glad that this, this holy word, the Jesus, the God, the power of the Holy Spirit that it points to, connected us. It's really cool. God is here. There's no denying. So today, just remember, Jesus is the vine. We are the branches. And we have the most awesome opportunity to go out there wherever we go, however we go, whenever we go, to sprout some of that good Holy Spirit fruit. So let's get after it. And I'll see you next week. Bye.